This is Jer, I'm playing Oxygen Not Included. In the last episode, I showed you how to use a pipe system to effectively cool down your base. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to effectively create oxygen via the electrolyzer. So the first thing we need to do is find a source for water and a place to put this machinery. So let's have a look around the base. I decided that my source of water is gonna be the brine. Now the thing is, I'm going to have to have that run through its salinator to get that be converted to water. In that process, I'm going to have to make sure that the brine is above freezing temperature before it goes into that machinery. I'm putting two thermal sensors next to the pump. I'm going to put an AND gate after that. And what I ultimately want to do is I want to make sure that pump doesn't send anything out unless both of those temperatures are above, let's say, 3 degrees. Now it is possible that pump could pick up something other than brine because there's polluted water in the area and there's also ice that could uh, melt. So I'm going to have to filter out everything except for brine to go in a different direction. I'm saving myself the power cost of a normal pump. I'm putting a liquid element sensor here and detecting brine, putting that through a knot gate. And basically what I'm doing is as water, or liquid rather, is pumping down this direction, if it's not brine, I want to go towards the right. And I'm just having a couple tanks to throw stuff in there. As long as those don't get filled, I'm not going to have a problem. And then essentially the uh, down direction is just going to be my filtered brine. So I'll be uh, just digging around different areas until I get to the location that I've chosen to generate oxygen. I know that Brine is going to take a while to warm up above 3 degrees, so I decided to create a pump in this little cache of water. I'm going to have that used as my initial source of water before I switch to brine for generating oxygen. The desalinator occasionally will have the dupes manually empty it, so I'm creating a light source just to make that process a little bit more efficient when they're there. So now that I have the output to the desalinator there, I'm going to merge the water cache from here with that desalinator. So I have a single source of water that I'm going to push towards my oxygen system. So here's the location that I chose to build it. So I'm digging out a spot. First thing I'm doing is going to handle the hydrogen that the electrolyzers are going to create. Now since hydrogen rises, the pump on the top is going to be pumping out that hydrogen pumps that I'm going to later on put at the bottom will be for the oxygen. So I'm going to create two electrolyzers, one on the left and one on the right side. I'm putting the, that on a air tiles. So putting one to the left, one to the right ladder just for the dupes to be able to have access there. I want to fully close off this system here. So I'm going to bring in a power tile as well as a number of just regular tiles and at the bottom I'm going to create a door. Once I have that, then I'm going to power it all up with heavy watt wires. I'm connecting my water pipe to the inputs of both those electrolyzers because it needs water in order to generate oxygen and hydrogen. Finishing off my door, and I'm going to put four pumps at the bottom of this room. Also digging underneath it, and I'll talk about that in just a second here. Each set of two pumps is going to have its own gas reservoir sitting underneath it. Alright, so let me explain how this works. I'm going to connect two of the pumps to a gas pipe. I'm going to feed it to the, the input. To, actually, no, I'm going to go over one further. So I want to have a sensor here and have it feed in here. So if it's oxygen, so I'm going to have a sensor, a gas pipe element sensor right here and if that one detects oxygen it's going to send it into the tank if it does not so if it's if it detects oxygen it's going down there if it does not detect oxygen it's just going to bleed out into the base so i make a little adjustment here so the whole point of this system here is really to save the power of using a regular gas filter because I want to assure that only oxygen goes through this system. So when you feed it things like masks and the Atmos suit, they're not going to break. If one of those tanks gets overfilled, we're going to have problems with filtering systems. Essentially, excess oxygen is going to go to those overpressured vents. 
So to prevent that, put automation wire from each tank to the two pumps that it's connecting to. And what that's going to do is we're going to send a signal that when that tank is full, or so let's say 80% full or more, shut the pumps off. So this is also going to be pumping out gas, but this is going to be hydrogen instead of oxygen. And I only want to operate at certain times when it detects hydrogen in the area. So I'm going to use a gas element sensor there. I'm put two of them in the area with an AND gate, and it'll only turn on if both of these detect hydrogen. Now we're so you're not guaranteed to have hydrogen come into the system. We may occasionally get a little bit of oxygen. So I'm putting that through a similar system. This time I'm going to look for hydrogen before it goes into the gas shutoff. I will make a note that if you have power fluctuations, so every now and then you're not having that power in your system, you can get problems with the, the system versus the normal gas filter. If you're interested to know more about this system, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video just on that. Now I'm building a hydrogen generator and a smart battery. And I'm putting a NOT gate after the output of the gas tank. And I'm building an OR gate in the input of the generator. Now for the gas tank, I'm going to put a setting of 8080. And what this is effectively going to say is if the tank is 80% full or more, then burn hydrogen. Or if we're in need of power, then again, burn hydrogen. If hydrogen fills up completely in that tank, it will start leaking out hydrogen in this area. Another warning, if you ever have water not be able to be input for a period of time, you may want to have a pressure sensor in there with an AND gate to shut those pumps off in those situations. Of course, you could be running out of oxygen for a period of time, you may have bigger problems. So after putting the proper sensors for the gas to be oxygen and hydrogen, and marking all their gas reservoirs to be 8080, I'm starting to bring pipes that go from the system towards my base. We're going to dump it so that my duplicates will be able to breathe oxygen from this system. Oxygen is ready to be pumped out of those pipes. Just one final note, make sure you provide cooling in the, these areas, particularly if your water source is hot. You may want to do that immediately if that's the case. So in the next episode, I'm going to be creating power from magma using a steam turbine. I hope to see you there.